What do you think is the greatest gift that the Jewish people has given to the world? Is it all the Nobel Prize winners, amazing technology and medical breakthroughs? Is it our values of social responsibility, tzedakah, or the equality of all humans? We could go on and on about the amazing contributions that Judaism has made to humanity, but there is one fundamental idea that stands alone, and that is monotheism. The idea of one God was a radical idea in the pagan world. And while Jews succeeded over many centuries in bringing this idea to a large portion of humanity, our concept of God and our loyalty to God has also incurred the wrath of our enemies. But we have tenaciously held on to it. And we continue to proclaim our belief in one God every day when we say the Shema prayer. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Every day we remind ourselves of this foundational principle of our faith. There's one God, one power. There's one address for everything. When we say Shema, we're actually fulfilling the first of the Ten Commandments, to know there's a God who's the creator of everything, sustainer of everything, and is intimately involved in our lives. He's our personal God, our Father who loves us. The prayer that precedes Shema, which is not in the pop-up machzer, is all about God's love for us. When we contemplate how much God loves us, we're ready to say the Shema and say, God, we love you too, v'ahavta, and we're committed to you, and we'll teach our, our beautiful Jewish values to our children. We'll speak about them all the time when we rise up and when we go to sleep, and we'll represent you in the world. And in this way, the Shema is also the mission statement of a Jew. It's customary to say the Shema while seated. We cover our eyes when we say the first two lines of Shema with our right, eye, our right hand. We say Shema Yisrael, and the second line, blessed is the name, Baruch Shem. We cover our eyes in order to get in touch with the reality of one God and the unity of everything in creation. When our eyes are open, we see many things, many disparate elements, multiplicity. But when we close our eyes, we can more easily imagine everything being encompassed within one God. Shema is one of the first prayers that we teach our children. And it's the last thing that a person says on his or her deathbed. When World War II was over, there were Jews who started searching around Europe for Jewish children who were left by their parents for safekeeping in convents. They would go to convents and beg to be allowed in to try to find these Jewish orphans and bring them back to their heritage. Many convents were uncooperative and they insisted that they had no Jewish children. But the searchers were also insistent and they begged, please, can we just have one minute with the children to see for ourselves? Many children had been in convents for years. They came when they were young, and they had little remembrance of their heritage that they could hang on to. The visitors would stand in front of the children and call out loudly, Shema Yisrael, and look to see if there was any response. Sometimes a child would become agitated and cry out, Mommy, Tati, Ima, Abba. The rescuers knew that every Jewish child was put to bed at night with the Shema. Calling out Shema was their surest chance of being able to identify a Jewish child. When we say Shema, we're a link in the chain of Jewish people who have been reciting this for over 2,000 years, pronouncing our belief in God and our loyalty to God.